Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From the well-preserved Pompeii of Britain to a tragic mass sacrifice, here are eight recent archaeological discoveries. Number 8. Ancient Snack Stall Did you know that ancient people also loved street food? One of the most recent finds from Pompeii is a brightly decorated snack stall that served hot food and drinks in the street to passerby. Vibrant frescoes depicting different animals, including a chicken and two ducks, cover the front of the stall. Pompeii was buried in ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, forcing residents to flee or perish. Even though the site was discovered in the 16th century and excavations began in 1750, archaeologists have only uncovered about two-thirds of Pompeii, and they continue to discover amazing things at the site left virtually frozen in time. Called a thermopolium or a hot drinks counter, the snack stand was discovered in a part of Pompeii that is not yet open to the public. The setup included terracotta jars, which the stallkeeper would have set into circular holes on the counter. Inside these jars, archaeologists found 2,000-year-old traces of animal products that were used in the foods that were offered, including pork, fish, snails, and beef. They also discovered a bronze drinking bowl or a patera, ceramic jars that were used for cooking soups and stews, amphorae, and wine flasks. This is an extraordinary find, said Pompeii Archaeological Park Director Massimo Osana. It's the first time we are excavating an entire thermopolium. It looks like the drawings on the front represent what was on the menu. What would you have ordered from this hot drinks counter? Some pork? Some snails? Some stew? Let me know in the comments below! Number 7. New King Tut Findings Even though King Tut's tomb was first opened nearly a century ago in 1922, experts continue to make shocking discoveries by reanalyzing its contents. A recent decade-long conservation study of the 3,300-year-old burial by the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, in partnership with the LA-based Getty Conservation Institute, has answered some long-standing questions about the tomb while raising some new ones. The tomb of the boy king and his treasures made the world fall in love with ancient Egypt and stories of a curse run rampant. One thing the researchers discovered were some questionable brown spots on the wall paintings that Carter even saw when he first opened the tomb. Were these toxic? Were they going to destroy everything? Turns out that these odd brown dots or freckles throughout the tomb have not grown or multiplied over the last hundred years or so, as some observers have claimed. These splotches were tested for microbes and were found to contain a metabolic product of some bacteria and fungi called malic acid. Experts believe that because Tut died unexpectedly and was likely entombed in a hurry, his chamber retained moisture, enabling the marks to form. Now the new curse is all the attention the tomb gets. Everyone who goes to the Valley of the Kings wants to see King Tut's tomb. Over the years, tourism caused the tomb to become heavily coated in dust. To tackle this ongoing issue, the team installed an updated air filtration and ventilation system, which both keeps dust out of the tomb and stabilizes its temperature and humidity levels. Still, researchers are concerned about the possible long-term impacts of dust on King Tut's burial chamber, and particularly on the artwork adorning its walls. The possibility of future flooding due to climate change is another potential issue plaguing experts' minds. However, they are most worried about the damages of getting so many visitors into the closed space and are thinking about restricting public access to it and instead redirecting visitors to a replica nearby. Neville Agnew, the project's lead scientist and conservator, told National Geographic that should King Tut's burial chamber remain open to the public, people should remember to approach it with humility and respect. A difficult thing to get to in this age of mass tourism, he said. Number 6. A Neolithic Mega Tsunami Sometime between 7,910 and 7,290 BC, a mega tsunami with a wave height of 52 and a half feet crashed into what is now Israel's Carmel Coast. A new study about the event describes the evidence scientists found at the Tel Dor archaeological site in northwestern Israel. On top of everything else, Neolithic people had to worry about mega tsunamis. Tsunami events in antiquity had a profound influence on coastal societies, lead study author Dr. Gilad Steinberg wrote. 6,000 years of historical records and geological data show that tsunamis are a common phenomenon affecting the eastern Mediterranean coastline. However, the possible impact of older tsunamis on prehistoric societies has not been investigated. 
The tsunami that the researchers studied is the earliest documented Holocene tsunami event. Based on their data, including an abrupt layer of seashells and sand, the scientists calculated that the mega tsunami traveled between 0.93 and 2.2 miles inland from the coastline at the time. They believe that the massive wave wiped out some settlements entirely based on a near-complete lack of pre-pottery Neolithic archaeological sites in the area. But there are newer sites indicating that people resettled some of the places that the tsunami destroyed. The study was part of an effort among scientists to gain a better understanding of ancient climate and environmental changes over the last 12,000 years. It looks like they have their work cut out for them. Number 5. Must Farm in Peterborough, England, archaeologists made an incredible discovery of an extraordinarily well-preserved Late Bronze Age settlement that was so impressive it was dubbed Britain's Pompeii, or the Pompeii of the Fens. It all started with the discovery of a series of wooden piles and a nearby collection of metal objects such as axes, all dating back to the Bronze and Iron Ages. Two more such sites, located on the edge of what's known as Flag Fen Marsh, were discovered nearby in the following years. Then came the discovery of a wooden footbridge dating back 2,500 years. Finally, the full extent of the site became known, and the ruins were discovered to be in a remarkable state of preservation. As archaeologists dug through the clay, they began finding fascinating artifacts like complete ceramic pots, swords, sickles, rope, textile fragments, animal tracks, and the axe seen here, which is still mounted on its wooden support. Experts believe that the Flag Fen Marsh contained a series of islands that were connected by stretches of swamp. The property was clearly an important settlement and trading center. The settlers there built their structures by constructing raised floors on posts inserted directly into the river bottom. Altogether, the settlement was made of five circular wooden huts dating back to the Bronze Age, with roofs that were made from plant materials. A defensive structure was built around the huts and it was linked by a wooden path that people could walk on. The residents who lived there fished and traded and farmed on the nearby mainland. They had boats carved out of tree trunks they used for traveling back and forth from the settlement to the land. This ancient settlement was only around for a year or so before it was destroyed in a fire, forcing the inhabitants to leave suddenly. The fire caused the structures to collapse, bringing them down into the sediment of the channel. Terrible for the people who lived there, but this sediment actually preserved pretty much everything. Now, the must farm houses are considered the most completely preserved prehistoric domestic structures found in Britain, with their contents frozen in sediment soon after the fire, like a time capsule, just like Pompeii was frozen in ash. Scientists say they are only in the early stages of investigating the vast quantity of material, and they probably have many more years to go. Number 4. Exotic Ancient Tastes Dental plaque is generally considered an undesirable substance in our everyday lives, but archaeologists love it. Recently it proved invaluable for a team of scientists who were on a mission to learn what the ancient people of the area of Levant ate, and plaque is the answer. The researchers analyzed the dental plaque, or calculus, of 16 skeletons from the settlements of Megiddo and Tel Irani, both located in modern-day Israel. Plaque taken from 16 upper-class graves at Megiddo turned up evidence of foods the team expected to see, including lots of grains, like wheat and millet, as well as dates and other fruits. They were surprised to learn, however, that the deceased also ate exotic foods from faraway lands like South and East Asia, such as soybeans and turmeric things that, until now, experts did not think people of the Mediterranean had access to 3,500 years ago. Dental calculus from burials at nearby Tel Irani dating back to 1100 BC also show evidence of people eating imported foods, including sesame from South Asia, as well as one man in his 50s whose teeth bore signs of having eaten bananas. Those who lived at Tel Irani are connected with the people the Bible refers to as the Philistines, and their graves are humble, not the type archaeologists expected to find imported exotic foods. The team who conducted the study believe that they've only scratched the surface of how many of the region's people ate exotic foods, which have flown under the radar until now due to their poor preservation and the complicated process of extracting plant proteins from dental calculus. Any dental archaeologists out there? Honestly, did you know that you could learn so much from people's teeth, even if they are thousands of years old? I was surprised. Number 3. Early Caribbean Migration The early migration history of the Caribbean has long been a confusing topic to scholars, who've recently got some concrete answers thanks to a groundbreaking study examining the DNA of 174 sets of human remains from throughout the region. 
Just a few years ago, it was impossible to extract genetic information from the bones, but now new technology has made it possible. Sometime between 6,000 and 7,000 years ago, a foraging people known as the Archaic Age people traveled to the Caribbean islands from coastal Central America and northern South America. Then, around 2,500 years ago, a group of pottery-making farmers, called the Ceramic Age people, set out from northeastern South America and ventured throughout the Caribbean. Soon after the Ceramic Age people arrived, the Archaic Age people seemed to have vanished, leaving their legacy behind in the form of ever-so-slight genetic traces from limited intermingling with the newcomers. Through disease or violence, the Ceramic people ultimately replaced the communities they encountered. The Archaic people lived longer in some places than others. In Cuba, for instance, they appear to have survived until around 900 AD, largely undisturbed by the new settlers, according to study co-author and archaeologist William Keegan. Moreover, the populations on the islands of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, modern-day Haiti and the Dominican Republic, were likely much smaller than the Spanish estimated upon arriving during the 15th century, numbering in the tens of thousands rather than the millions like they thought. Number 2. Mass Child Sacrifice Between 2011 and 2019, archaeologists in northeastern Peru unearthed the remains of 269 children from the Chimu culture, all between the ages of 5 and 14, and three adults at a site called Juan Chaquito Las Llamas. The burials date back over 500 years to sometime between 1400 and 1450, and belong to people who appear to have died in a mass sacrifice, making for a shocking and unexpected discovery. It's the largest known child sacrifice ever found. Michael Spano, a local pizzeria owner, alerted archaeologist Gabriel Prieto after human bones began emerging from a vacant lot near his home. Excavations ensued, and Prieto quickly noticed that the graves were unlike typical Chimu culture burials. Instead of being positioned upright, as was customary, they were laid on their backs or curled up on their sides, and many had cut marks on their sternum and ribs. Typical grave goods, such as pottery, were conspicuously absent. Oddly, many children were buried alongside llamas and alpacas, which were extremely valuable to the Chimu people as a food source and method of transportation. Like the children, the animals were also sacrificed. The Chimu culture is largely a mystery, complicating researchers' ability to figure out precisely what went on that horrifying day when the children were sacrificed. With no written records left behind by the Chimu themselves, archaeologists must rely on physical evidence and the observations that the Spanish recorded upon their arrival to the region. And until archaeologists excavated the mass grave, there were no signs that the Chimu sacrificed children. They suspect that an altered climate, specifically higher seas, heavy rains, and severe effects of El Niño may have destabilized the civilization's economic and political stability. Consequently, the mass sacrifice of some of their most valuable offerings, children and animals, may have been done in a desperate attempt to appease the gods in one final plea. Number 1. Ancient Ritual Bath Archaeologists working at Jerusalem's Mount of Olives, near where the Last Supper is believed to have taken place, have found the remains of a 2,000-year-old ritual Jewish bath called a mikvah. While discoveries of Second Temple-era baths in Israel are not unusual, this mikvah is the first evidence linking the site to the time when Jesus lived, more particularly, his last day alive. The site is believed to be the New Testament's Gethsemane, where Jesus suffered in agony for a night following the Last Supper, and also where he was arrested and taken away by Roman soldiers before he was crucified. The discovery does not prove the claims detailed in the Gospels, but it brings researchers one step closer to establishing that credibility. For the first time, we have archaeological evidence that something was here in the Second Temple period in the days of Jesus, Amit Ra'em, the Jerusalem district head of the Israel Antiquities Authority, told the Times of Israel. It is not from the mikvah that we are so excited, rather the interpretation, the meaning of it, because despite there being several excavations in the place since 1919 and beyond, and that there were several findings, from the Byzantine and Crusader eras and others, there has not been one piece of evidence from the time of Jesus. Nothing! Until now, the absence of any New Testament-era discoveries at the site caused experts to wonder if maybe the events of some of Jesus' last days of life happened elsewhere. Now they at least know it's possible that these things may have happened at the site.
During Jesus' time, Gethsemane was a field full of olive trees that sat outside Jerusalem's walls. It likely contained an olive press, although no signs of one have ever been found there. The mikvah may have been used for purification after making olive oil, which was required according to Jewish law, Rem explained. Archaeologists' work at the site is not done yet. They have a lot more analyzing to go. Thanks for watching! Which discovery did you think was the most surprising? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you soon. Bye!